I hope you are doing well. And today we see the design of key beans. And then I hope you follow very well the lecture. Now let's go to the presentation. And today at the beginning, I repeat a little the uh, concepts of design of the T-beams. And also we have more examples that you will see here. Therefore, I think you should now see the uh, shared lecture. Yes, this is the cover page of the lecture. Today it is 24th of April of 2020. We have the second lecture of the eighth week, eighth week. Therefore, the course is concrete, reinforced concrete design or reinforced concrete theory with the code of CIV 481. For especially the nearest university student. Today, as I mentioned, we will see the concepts and the design of the T-beams. We apply the Archimedes strength method for this design, and we see some examples. When you say T-beams, the design of T-beams and L-beams, they are very similar, they are the same. Just a minor the difference is the the value of B, the width of the B. Okay. Again, they are joining the student. Yes. Now. Last lecture, I gave some ideas about the design of T-beams. And now we are reviewing that very shortly, which you can find that in the chapter five of the reference book. As I mentioned before, reinforced concrete floor systems normally consist of, consist of slabs and beams that are placed monolithically and they are casted in the same time. As a result, the two parts are together to resist the loads. In effect, the beam have, the beams has, have extra widths at the top, which is called phalanges. And the beam is called T-beam. Therefore, the part of T-beam below the slab is referred to as the web or stem of the T-beams. Therefore, we have flange and web. We discussed before that the design of T-beams, we follow the same criteria and concepts that we followed for the rectangular section beams. For both of them, we consider that the concrete is at, at the strains of 0 0.003, three per thousand. And it's at a ultimate strength of that. And also, we assume that the steel has a stress of yield strength steel. Therefore, we, if S for us equals Fy. And you remember that we said when the strain at the steel, epsilon t, is greater than or equal to 5 per thousand, 0 0.005, 
in that case, we say the, the section is ductile and it's sure that the steel is yielded. And actually, when epsilon t is greater than something about two per thousand is yielded, but when we have more than five per thousand is ductile and we consider phi equals zero nine. If epsilon t strain and st is less than five per thousand, in that case, you consider phi less than zero nine. And you have curve to calculate that, you remember that. And we have two cases in design. When the location of neutral axis is located at flange, the design of beam is exactly like a rectangular section beams. When its neutral axis is located at the web, the design is like T beams. We will see more in the next slides. <clears throat> in this slide, <clears throat> you see that <clears throat> when the parts of a slab is working with the beam, this part actually is working with the beam and in the other side as well this part of a slab which works with the beam and generate for us a T beam therefore this is the case the T beam Now I am coloring the web. No, no, the flange. This is the flange of TV. And it helps a lot, increase the strength of the beam a lot. And the other part, let me show with another color. This part actually is the web. the web but the web and flange or sometimes we say flanges because we have two parts sides these are forming the T beam Finally, this is a T-beam from here to here and from here to here. This is for us a T-beam. And the effective length, effective width, let me change the color, is too red. The effective, actually, Flange B is given by the code is given by the code and no need for that one we waste a lot of time and we have one B here and one BW which is the with of the flange BW. For rectangular section, we have just one B, but here we have two B. One B at flange, you can say BF or B. The other BW, which is the V at 
Well, and the height of flange is shown by HF and also like rectangular section from the center of steel bars up to extreme fiber of compression concrete top is called the D, the same. And you know, for T beams, we have like rectangular beam stirrups, which covering here. Let's go and see what is the location of the neutral axis. You see in this slide, two cases. One of them, the location of neutral axis located at flange at flange here therefore you see that just the shaded one part here we have the compression concrete and you remember that we neglected the tension concrete we neglected the strength of concrete here this was neglected When I say neglected, I mean the, the concrete is neglected. We don't consider that in the design. Of course, concrete is neglected. Yeah, we consider there only the steel. Concrete is neglect. Therefore, what does it mean? It means the form can be if we consider just this compression and neglect it the tension part it doesn't matter if we can say that uh, it could be one triangle like this or one T shape like this therefore in both cases we neglected the tensile or tension concrete. Therefore, we can say that design of this T-beam in this location is exactly like a rectangular with the width of B. In this case, we design like rectangular. Rectangular section. Rectangular section with width of B, the bigger one, not BW. Section when we consider the width of B, not BW. But for the second, uh, figure that we have here B, the neutral axis is located 
add web. When we have add the web, we have a T section and we should design like a T. In this slide, we say that if the design is like rectangular section, when the meter axis is located at flange, therefore, we use the formula that we had for rectangular section and we can calculate A from here. This figure, figure 5.3 shows very well if the location of neutral axis is at the web, doesn't matter which form we have in the compression part, even in flange as well. Can be any form because we neglect all the concrete in this part. Let me see who is joining. Okay. Therefore, now we have 36 students at lecture. Okay. Next, in next lecture, we see the step by step the actions that we should do for analysis of the T-beams. Therefore, if we have T-beams, first we check the minimum reinforcement at this section, AS mean. And we're using BW as the VIVO web width is clear. And second action, second step is computing the tensile force due to steel which is ASFY. I think, let me raise that one. I made a little, yeah. Therefore, first step, try AS minimum. Second step is finding tensile steel. And the third step is equating compression force to the tension force and finding AC. AC is the area of the uh, compression concrete under the stress that we applied the equivalent rectangular uh, block of stress of ACI. You remember that. It has a, an intensity of 0.85 prime C. And then we find from here AC. And now we compare AC with the area of flange. If AC is greater than the area of flange, it means the location of the Neutral axis it at width. If AC is less than the area of flange, the location of neutral axis is at flange. And then we calculate the strain at steel by calculation of A, the depth of the ACI block, stress block, and see the distance showing the location of neutral axis from the top, from the extreme 
fiber of compression concrete. And then we calculate the design ultimate <clears throat> resisting moment, which is Y times MN. And phi times Nm, you know that for us equals MU, ultimate strength design, resisting moment. And phi, it was reduction factor, 0, 0,9 when there is ductile section, epsilon T is greater than five, thousand and by the way it is t it is in the reference book is mm, typed by mistake this is epsilon t not epsilon r it is correct in the reference book as well therefore you find mu and you know the capacity of the section Now we see two examples. One of them shows that the neutral axis is located at the flange, the other at the web, and we see how to solve them. Actually, I saw this example for you in the previous lecture. I am repeating here why, because we have a complete collection of different cases in one video. Therefore, in example, it says that determine the design strength of the T-beam shown in the figure. When a primacy, the characteristic strength of concrete is given 4,000 PSI pound per square inch. And if y, the yield strength of the steel is given equal to the 60,000 PSI. The span length of the beam is given 30 feet. And also the height of a slab is given, the thickness of a slab is four inches. And the clear, clear distance between the webs is 50 inches. It means that the distance between beams, adjacent beams, is 50 inches. As I mentioned, we should first find the value of effective width of this section. And ACI gave us three limits that we calculate them and minimum value of these values are considered at B. Let me who is joining. Okay. Therefore, In this example, you know, B has three different values. One of them 16 times the, of the height of flange plus the width of the web. The other one is the average or clear distance to the agent A adjacent webs or beams plus pw and the other one is a span length divided by four if we apply the values we find 74 inches from the first one 60 inches from the second one and 90 inches from the last one we should select the minimum values Therefore, between these three, this item is selected. For us, this is B. Therefore, you see that B here is 60. 
And the other given, we have six number nine reinforcement that the area is found from table, you remember? And the D for us from the center of the two layer reinforcement from the center of them. Up to the extreme fiber of compression concrete, this is for us D. And the height, when you add D to the concrete cover, you will find H. Therefore, two new people joined us, okay? Now, this is the question. We found the B, the V of the TD. In next slide, we calculate AS minimum that we should have. We should check two values. AS minimum equals a row minimum. This is row minimum times BW times B. We apply the values and we find AS minimum 0 0.76 inch square, but, but it should not be less than this value is another control. Therefore, we give us an other value. When it says not less than this value, it means that if you calculate two value, you consider the maximum value of them. Don't make mistake. The maximum of these two is selected. The maximum between 0 0.76 inch square and then 0 0.8 or 80 square inches, we selected this one as AS minimum. This AS minimum for us. We compare AS minimum with AS that we have in the section. AS minimum is less than the value that we have. That's okay for us. This is the control of that. The second step, as you remember, it was the calculation of T. T we calculate from ASFY. We apply the values and we find one value of 36K. Therefore, we calculated T. And then AS, we control the AS minimum. And now we calculate AC from the equation of C equal T. The compression force equal tension force, equilibrium condition. Actually, AC equals T over 0.85 at prime C. We find 105.88 square inches. Now, we should compare AC, the compression area, with the flange area. If AC is greater than flange area, the neutral axis is located at width. If less than the flange of area, the neutral axis is located at flange. 
you will see that AC is less than flange area. It means that the compression stress block that given by ACI and we apply that give us that the A or in general we say the depth of that one is located at flange. Therefore, we should design the T-beam exactly like rectangular beam section. Now, for evaluating and finding the value of phi, we should calculate epsilon t. Epsilon t is a strain at a steel level, at a steel. For that, we should calculate A. A here is very simple. This is AC over B. Let me show you why. If we get back to here, you imagine that we have this part as compression zone. And AC the area of this part which I highlighted here this is for us AC in this case and it's clear that AC equals you know that if we consider A the value of the depth of stress, compression stress is A, the area of this shaded one is A times B. Therefore, from here we can calculate A equals AC over B. Because of that, in this slide, in this calculation, We write A equals AC over B because of this one. <clears throat> And after calculation of A, we calculate C. You remember that A was a factor of C by a factor of beta 1. Beta 1 was 0 0.85 when we had a prime C equal or less than 4,000 PSI. In our example, you see that for us it's given a prime C equals 4000 PSI. Therefore, beta 1 equals 0 0.85. Then 
Therefore, beta 1 is 0, 85. We find a C, and we, we find C, and we apply in the equation here. And we had D, we calculate epsilon T. A strain at a steel bars is something about 31 per thousand, 32 per thousand. It's much greater than five per thousand. Therefore, we say this section is ductile and phi for us is 0 0.9. And next step is to calculating MU, ultimate uh, resisting moment of the section which is mu. We calculate z, the lever r, which is t minus a over 2. That's the lever r between c and t, the compression force and tension force. Uh, I want to see this section. Let me go to the next slide. This is slide. Yes, if I go here and let me uh, write this one color. If the C is at the center of Compression zone, this is C. And T is at the center of steel. The lever R between the distance between C and T. This is Z. And Z is, uh, you know, that D minus half of A, A over 2. Okay. Therefore, by applying the value, we found the value of Z. And applying the value of Phi and TZ, we find MU or Phi MN. This is for us MU. That is in feet kips. Okay, let's see another example, which in this case you will see that the location of the uh, neutral axis is at the web. Therefore, the design is not like rectangular section, it is like a T section. The characteristic is changed and the dimension are changed. You see in the figure, compute the design strengths for the T beam shown in the figure, in which a prime C is 4,000 psi and a Y 60,000 psi. D, 30 inches, B, uh, B is given. We should not calculate, but is 30 inches and BW, 14 inches.
therefore given these values d is given d e should calculate that actually d for us is given here from top and up to here if you are, was not given this value from here you can add in this four inches to 26 you can find that or directly is given here and d value is given the reinforcement is given we can create area from the table then again we follow the same steps first we calculate as minimum and then you remember that we should consider not less than the other one value we should calculate the maximum this value and maximum of these two values we select this one select and now we compare this one with value as we have our as is much greater than that one that's the checking is okay and now we go to the next step to calculate ac the compression area which is under the stress block therefore we have here we apply t the t we have calculated before that t is a s always time f y not f s you apply the values you pay attention here we have k s i 60 but in the question is given in psi 60,000 it was psi and this ksi because kit is 1000 inches is divided by 1000 and we have ksi then when we calculate a c we see that it is something about 178 square inches and it's the flange has a smaller area only 120 therefore this is greater than this one you see that ac compression zone is greater than greater than a f a of flange therefore the location of the a or stress block now this time is below the flange at its at the web when you compare these two values okay what will happen something that will change now z changes this time z that we calculate is not d minus over uh, d minus a over 2 z equals for us d minus y bar what is y bar y bar is the location of showing the location of the neutral axis for example see this figure you know that in this figure we have the shaded one shows the ac the total of 120 square inch and 58.6 square inches 
This is AC. And the center of gravity of this one has a location, for example, at here. This is the center of gravity of the uh, shaded one. And it is shown by Y bar from here up to the top of the section. This is Y bar for us. We should calculate that. For calculating is easy. We have two simple shapes, one rectangular top, one bottom, one bottom. <clears throat> the center of the top one is clear is at the, let me show with another color. For example, with blue one. Center of gravity of this one is at the middle, somewhere here. Therefore, Y1 if we call this one Y1 because half of 2 inches is 2 inches 2 inches And the center of gravity of the second one is somewhere here. That I can call that Y2 from here to here. And the area of this part, I call that A1. Who is joining? Let me do the lecture. Yes. Okay. Therefore, here, Let me get back to the slide. Huh. Here, if this area is A2, and you know that, let me show with another color. Total area for us, was AC. AC equals A1 plus A2. Now, for finding this height, this height, if you divide the area, area A2, into to the VW, you will find this height. For calculating Y bar, Y bar equals, you know, four inches that we have here. Plus half of this value. Plus 4.9. Either 
divided by 2. So if I go to the previous example, this is a slide. You see here, we calculated y bar. You know that y bar formula, if you have any, doesn't matter, you have summation of a i if you have i elements times y i over summation of a i Therefore, we have I for us is two. Because we have two rectangular simple shape. Y2. Here you see that you have one A1, the other A2. Therefore, us. This formula is y bar equals y bar equals a one y one plus a two. y2 over a1 plus a2 a1 plus a2 Therefore, C, this is for you A1, this is Y1, this is A2, and this is Y2 over AC, which equals A1 plus A2. You find Y bar. equals this value. When we calculate Z, we use Z equals D minus Y bar. Therefore, this is Z, which is calculated. Or we calculate later, we calculate it, yeah. Uh, the lever arm distance from C to T to C equals D minus Y bar. As I said here, Actually, the lever arm when we talk, this is Z. Therefore, the Z is found. And now we go and calculate epsilon t. You remember that. Let me change the color as well. 
Now when we're calculating, we wanted to calculate epsilon t, we should calculate c values. For c, we should calculate a. a, we calculated, is 4 inches plus, let me show you a in the next figure. Let me erase this value. Because the area that is under compression is from here, actually. to extreme compression fiber here. This is for us A. A is the summation of this value plus this value. This is A. Because of that, we wrote A equals 4 inches plus 4.19. It is 8.19 inches. We apply A here. We find C. We apply C here and here. And you remember that this was found from similarity of a strain triangles in the strain profile. Therefore, we find epsilon t something about six per thousand, which is greater than five per thousand, that this section is ductile, and phi is zero nine, that's excellent. Therefore, we calculate now the ultimate <coughs> resisting moment of the section, MU. MU, which equals the reduction factor five times nominal resisting moment, MN, and MN was T times Z. We found Z there, we found T, and we verified the value of phi is 0, 09, we find MU. MU is in terms of inches. Inches. Why? Because we have here inch we have. It's better to convert to foot. For that one, you divide this value by 12. Convert that. Then we have MU. Uh, we will apply, this is the method that we used. It was the finding the AC, the area of compression zone, and then apply the other parts. The other method we have that is traditionally used, they divide the section by two parts, one from the web under the compression and the other two wings of the flange. And then adding 
the effect to each other. You say this section equals this one plus the other one. And when you say MU here, equals MU due to this one, you say MU1 plus MU two. And then this other method explain and drive the formulas very simply. The addition of the C, the addition of Z, everything two parts. And then we will see some examples. The solutions. I prefer do this method and solution next lecture. Don't forget go and see some videos that I put here. They are very helpful for you. Therefore, let me who is joining now at the end of the lecture. Kabel is coming, okay. Therefore, I hope you understood the lecture and we continue to see the other method inshallah in next lecture. If you have any question, please ask me. Otherwise, we see you inshallah Monday in the midterm exam. Any question from the beginning? Any question? There are some chatting. Let me what are uh, written. Okay, if I am not mistaken, let me start from the end. Thank you, Prof. Written Rafat. You're welcome, Donna. Which chapter are included in the midterm exam? Always from A to five minutes before midterm exam. From the beginning of semester to five minutes to midterm exam. It means everything. Abel, prof, midterm includes chapter five or not? Includes everything to this moment, from the beginning up to this moment. Valid. Thank you, prof. You are welcome. You are most welcome. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, prof. Uh, ah, Ibrahim, run technical questions. Why we calculated the ultimate moment when we just use yield strength? What do you mean? When we have ultimate strength, we use not the annual stresses. We apply the ultimate or yield. Yield? Ha, huh, you mean that perhaps we have the ultimate uh, strength of the steel? because it considered one linear plastic or polyer stress strain for steel. And we design for that. We don't go to the strain hardening of that. Okay, thank you very much. And please take care of yourself and be safe. See you inshallah Monday at five o'clock in the midterm exam. Have a nice day and then bye bye. Therefore, when we uh, finish this one, let me go to the. Thank you, Prof. You're welcome, Abdul Aziz. Abdul Ra, okay. Mm -hmm. Let me finalize this one. I we stop we solve here. Solve this one. And we finish this one. We stop actually here for 
next lecture. Thank you very much and bye.